So I've seen this trend going on in social media about high intensity training, training to failure, and just training hard in general. And I wanted to talk about it. So the conclusion to this is yes, high intensity training works. It has always worked and it will always work. And it should be part of your programs. Like you should be training to failure with certain degree of consistency. But as with most things, there are some caveats to it. There are some things that you should consider before you just jump into training to failure on every single set or every single thing that you do. So let's get into those. Now, as with most things in fitness, whenever some nuanced methodologies come to light in the media or whenever some like avant-garde approaches to fitness are popularized, it turns out that some guy in the 60s and 70s spent like a decade or two doing them and documenting them, usually in a lot of detail. But for, for any given reason, all the knowledge stay like niche down. And this is not an exception. You know, in the US, in the realm of bodybuilding, you have people like Mike Menzer, who was known for doing one or two sets at most. And there's this video or audio of him, I don't know how real it is, but he's describing how doing two sets instead of one is the most that you can do in terms of incrementing volume because it represents a 100% increment to volume. By the time you get to your third set, you're only adding, let's say, 50% from two sets. By the time you get to your fourth row, you're only adding like 33%. Yes, 33% to the overall volume. By the time you get to your fifth set, you're only adding 25% of volume, and so on and so on and so on. When you move into powerlifting, you have people like Lewis Simmons talking about how all of his, all of his athletes train above 90% year long and how he only requires three weeks to peak any of, these, any of these athletes for competition as opposed to the normal 12, 16 weeks that most strength athletes need in order to peak for competition. I'll say, you say, Louie, I challenge you to a contest in 12 weeks. I'll say, I'll challenge you to a contest in three weeks and we could go do it any time of the year. But a lot of people have to have this long period of time. Right? We don't. We're constantly above 90%. He also quotes uh, some Soviet literature by saying that any athlete who's not able to lift above 90% is not even in a trainable state. So in order for you to consider to be a trainable athlete under Lewis Simmons, you need to be capable of lifting 90% of plus, which is heavy for most strength athletes. Finally, if you move into the realm of weightlifting, you have people like Ivan, Ivan, Ivan Abajev, who for like two decades led the Bulgarian team to essentially dominate in the world scene in weightlifting. He produced multiple Olympic champions, multiple world champions, and multiple European champions. And he did all of this under the Bulgarian weightlifting system, which got rid of variability and got rid of like anything that wasn't specific in high intensity. Under the Bulgarian system, his athletes would simply max out the competition lifts and the front squat every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. Like you will max out your snatch in the morning, max out your front squat in the, like around lunch, and then max out your clean and jerk in the evening. It was pure, pure intensity. And it worked because high intensity works. Now let's get into some of the issues. First off, I want to talk about PEDs because uh, the use of steroids and PEDs is often used by people who don't want to train like this and don't want to give any merit to the training methodologies to just shove them off to the side saying it's impossible or it is simply ignored by those who want to train like this and they think that's the only way of training, which is a perfect example of motivated reasoning. But anyways, yes, PEDs were used in all of these schools of training and yeah, PEDs work, <laughs> but it is important to note that they were used in order to sustain an otherwise unsustainable pace and schedule to this type of training. So what would happen if you take these schools of thought, take out the PEDs and simply account for the extra rest and recovery needed in order to sustain a similar schedule? Of course, a lot lesser, but still. Could it work? I mean, maybe. But even then, there's, some, there's still a few things to consider. First off is the issue of volume. 
And in most of these examples, I will also make the distinction between a bodybuilder and just an athlete in general, playing ball sports or any other type of sport. First issue comes with volume. In the realm of bodybuilding, it's not really a concern because training is only used to gain mass and gain weight. You might have some posing training in which, yeah, maybe volume is required, but for the most part, you're in the gym just to get big and that's it. Meanwhile, when it comes to other sports, training is about accruing volume and accruing reps because you need to refine certain skills and motor patterns. And in order to perfect those, we need volume, we need reps, we need a lot, a lot of work. And we cannot just make that trade for higher intensity and lesser work. It just won't work the same. Second issue is conditioning. Now, when it comes to bodybuilding, uh, conditioning is simply used as a tool to improve recovery and lose weight. And for the most part, I don't see many issues with what's being pushed and what people tend to think when it comes to conditioning and bodybuilding. It seems that everybody in that uh, physique sphere has a very good handle on how to use conditioning. On the other hand, though, when it comes to most sports, I do see high intensity being used to replace or to account for all the necessary lower intensity work. I do see people making that mistake. And the fact of the matter is that you cannot replace lower intensity work with just high intensity work. It doesn't work the same. You know, the adaptations created at the heart level are different. When it comes to lower intensity work, you're prioritizing um, eccentric hypertrophy, which means that your heart is essentially being able to, or being trained to um, fill up with more blood with each beat. On the other hand, high intensity work promotes concentric hypertrophy, which essentially just makes your heart stronger and capable of pumping more blood. These are two different adaptations and you can't just train for both at the same time. You need to make the distinction between high intensity and lower intensity work, between intensity and volume. That distinction must be made when it comes to training for most sports. Even strength athletes do a lot of GPP work, like Westside Barbell is notorious for doing GPP work. And when it comes to GPP work, you focus on volume and lower intensities. Finally, the third pointer is how hard this type of training is on your body. And this actually pertains to both bodybuilders and athletes in general. So in the early stages of your development, you should be focused with acquiring the proper mechanics for the movements that you're gonna be doing for the rest of your career. You know, even in bodybuilding, learning how to execute the movements properly, how to like, create that mind-muscle connection more efficiently with each movement, that's an important part of your progression. Shouldn't be ignored. And there's also the fact that tendons and joints are slower to development than most of our muscles are. So if you just push too hard and advance too fast, you will usually end up dealing with injuries in soft tissue and joints. And this, of course, will delay your progressions because you'll have to take time off just to recover. And the answer to both of these problems, both acquiring better mechanics and allowing your joints and tendons to strengthen is volume, not intensity, is accruing volume, doing more work. And in order to do more work, you need to step off the gas a little bit. So just prioritize, like I said, in the early stages of development, prioritize volume. Forget about intensity for a little bit. It won't be the end of the world. A perfect example of this is a quote by Glenn Penley, who stated that, the Bulgarian weightlifting system was a system that would take in 100 athletes, break 95 of them, and produce five Olympic champions. Like This is the reason why variability and periodized progressions are such an intrinsic part of most programs for most coaches. Like I build my programs around those concepts because we wanna make sure we're developing our athletes and making them resilient to the hard training that will come because a complete program needs high intensity work. There will be hard weeks. There will be tough weeks, weeks that are meant to test you. There's just not every day on every movement, on every set, on every rep. Now again, for bodybuilding, yeah, there's a little more leeway there and you could actually see, I mean, I've seen people claiming great results from it. I haven't tested it. I did buy Mike Menser's book, so if I need to adjust any of my perceptions when it comes to this type of training, I will be updating you guys on a video, but <laughs> we'll see. So to summarize, yes, high intensity works. It's always worked and it should be part of your program. You should be training a failure or maxing out somewhat consistently. That may mean 
every three weeks, every four weeks, a couple times a week, once a week, big Fridays, that type of thing. You should just be more careful about how you approach it and how often you use it because it is hard on your body and oftentimes training volume for intensity is not a solution. And that's all I have for this week. If you stay till the end, thank you so much. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's links below to all of my blogs and all the things that I do, all of my programs and absolutely everything, all my socials. So, yeah, that's all I got for this week. Thank you. It is important to draw wisdom from many different places. If we take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Understanding others, the other elements, and the other nations will help you become whole.